At the center of the Henrietta Lack story are people asking questions. For people trying to understand the biology of human cells, it's, it's there for bioethicists, for patients. This is why Johns Hopkins is committed to outreach and education for all the community. It's a labor of love. We all feel like we're connected to this beautiful woman um, who we call the mother of medicine. It really makes you think about how powerful an impact one person unknowingly could make. Good morning, everyone. Thank you all for coming to learn more about my great-grandmother and what her legacy has left for all of us here today. So over 60 years ago, my great In my capacity as the director of outreach for the Institute for Clinical and Translational Research, I organized educational programs related to Henrietta Lacks. And the main focus is to increase awareness of Henrietta Lacks' impact on medicine and society, to gain a better understanding of the science behind HeLa cells, and also to create an open dialogue about the social issues that were occurring around the time in which Henrietta Lacks' cells were cultured. I would say that Henrietta is probably if not the most important, certainly one of the most important women in science and medicine. And we all learn and follow Henrietta Lack's legacy as we contribute to research and medicine. Henrietta Lack was a 31-year-old woman admitted to Johns Hopkins in 1951 for the diagnosis and treatment of cervical cancer. Unfortunately, she had a very aggressive cancer, and within a year, she had died. As part of the care she received at Johns Hopkins, the cells from her cervix were brought into a laboratory and cultured, and have become the first human living cell line, which has allowed us to learn remarkable things about how human cells function. It was really, in my opinion, the launch pad probably the greatest discovery in biomedical research in the last half of the 20th century. It has led to numerous discoveries and development of technologies. It provided the ability for us to understand um, how cells grow, how cells divide, whether cells can survive in extreme climates, going into outer space, how radiation damages cells, um, how we can produce lots of material to make things like vaccines, which is all part of what the HeLa cell has done for, for science and for the public. Just the fact that, you know, 65 years later, a sample of our grandmother's cell still exists out in the world today is almost, almost superhuman. Our responsibility is to honor the legacy of Henrietta, to thank her family and thank her posthumously each year, which is what we do. We have a Henrietta Lacks Memorial Lecture. I think last year we had 1,000 people attend. Each year we organize a, the Henrietta Lacks High School Symposium. We've partnered with the Henrietta Lacks Legacy Group, the Turner Station Conservation Teams, and other groups to form a book club that builds a bridge for people who live in this community and Hopkins researchers to get together and really talk about issues. We also have the microscope day in which we open up the laboratory of one of our colleagues, Jim Potter. They learn about the significance of her cells. The Johns Hopkins Urban Health Institute offers a $15,000 partnership grant to community-based organizations that partner with Johns Hopkins researchers to address health challenges that are impacting people who live in Baltimore. We also partner with Dunbar High School to offer the Henrietta Lacks Scholarship for individuals who are interested in pursuing careers in medicine. And that is really, to us, a real, one of the ultimate ways of honoring Henrietta Lacks is to increase the prevalence of individuals working in medicine who understand the unique challenges of the community. This scholarship is, was, is way more than this academics is me being a part of a legacy. It shows you that Henrietta Lacks did, herself did more than help cure diseases. Her 
her sacrifice, it has given teenagers like me an opportunity to excel in their future. The students are the next generation. They're the next generation of doctors, researchers, scientists. So to get them exposed to the story of Henrietta Lacks and see the mistakes that were made and how we are moving forward, possibilities of uh, endless. What was most interesting to me was what the providers were saying. Collaboration between the community and academics uh, is what medicine is supposed to be. We're not supposed to be an ivory tower. We are supposed to be working with the people we serve. And by reaching out to the community, we better understand them, their needs, and they understand what it takes for us. At some point and some time in life, everybody's gonna get sick. Everybody's gonna suffer for some type of disease, some type of cancer, some type of dementia, any type of thing. So we need research to, you know, find cures, find medication, and find some kind of prevention. So I think it's very important in research, and I think, you know, we need to do our part to get involved. So again, I want to say thank you for helping us honor my great-grandmother Henrietta Lacks and what she Henrietta passed away, but yet she still lives on and she's making a huge impact on society today.